As some of you guys may have heard, another YouTuber has passed away, and in this case, it appears that he took his own life. Daniel Desmond Amofa, better known as Etika, he was a gaming influencer. He His body was found yesterday, and I honestly uh, was not familiar with him or his content until yesterday upon learning the news of his passing. Regardless, whenever a YouTuber passes away, it feels a bit like losing a schoolmate in high school or something, where even if it was someone who wasn't necessarily in your same year or wasn't in classes with you, it still affects you in a way. He uploaded what would be his final video to his YouTube channel five or six days ago, and it was called I'm Sorry. The video has since been removed moved by YouTube presumably, but there have been other channels that have ripped and re-uploaded it. He was missing for a few days and his belongings were found near the Manhattan Bridge just a few days ago. And then yesterday morning, NYPD confirmed that they had recovered his body from the East River. He was 29 years old. This story is already tragic enough, but it's made even sadder by the fact that this man had clearly made several cries for help. Philip DeFranco put it very well when he said something to the effect of, this is a person who drowned in a crowded room. As an outsider looking in, it looks to me like Desmond did everything he possibly could have done to ask for the help that he so desperately needed, help that never came, but sadly enough, he still somehow just slipped through the cracks. I think it's human nature for some of us anyway, to want to learn more about a person's life after hearing about their passing, even if we didn't know of this person prior to them passing away. Etika had something like 800,000 followers. I mean, who really gives a shit about metrics at this point? I only bring that up to uh, illustrate just how much social media is not real. Followers and social media success will not fix you. And in fact, they are very likely to make things much, much worse. This is someone who reportedly got his YouTube channel deleted intentionally by uploading adult content to it. He'd had breakdowns on live streams, made more than one threat to kill himself prior to this. And he was forcibly hospitalized fairly recently after making threats to harm both himself and others from what I have read and seen. In short, he was consistently displaying erratic, unstable behaviors. The most disturbing thing of all to me though is that while all of this was unfolding, there was a plethora of remarks about this not being real. There was a lot of skepticism and disbelief over whether he was actually having these issues with his mental health or whether all of this was just stunt after stunt after stunt. There seemed to be an overwhelming belief amongst many people that he was doing all of this just for clicks. The responsibility to get Etika or any other influencer real help, that onus is not upon his audience. That would be absolute nonsense. A person's followers don't have real access to affect any sort of intervention when a person is suffering, no matter how publicly this person is suffering. That is, of course, the responsibility of a person's family and friends. However, social media has normalized truly unspeakable cruelty, as well as the systematic dehumanization of people in the public eye to a degree that I don't think we've ever seen before. Perhaps this is only 2020 hindsight because I only learned of Etika and his behaviors through learning about his demise, but I still don't think that there's any way that a reasonable, sympathetic, empathetic person could have seen this behavior, seen all of this unfolding, and said, mm, what a pussy, what a bitch, he's just chasing clout. And yet, throughout his public deterioration, this was indeed the response, not just from trolls, but from people within his own so-called fan base. This man was very obviously in tremendous pain, and it is just, I don't know how to express effectively just how heartbreaking it is to have seen the relentless casting of doubt on the fact that he truly was in pain. There seems to me to be a very inverse relationship between success as a social media influencer and mental health. I'm at a point where I believe a career or even a hobby in social media should be contraindicated for anyone with mental health challenges, full stop. 
Obviously, this isn't something that could ever be enforced or policed, especially considering that that line of work seems to attract people who struggle with mental health issues more often than not. There just seems to be an overwhelming majority of people doing this job who seek external validation and affirmation from strangers when what they truly should be seeking is therapy. I hope that someday soon someone actually does a study to really dig into and investigate the correlation among mental health disorders and illnesses like anxiety, depression, and so on, and how that correlates to careers in YouTube and other social media outlets. Because Etika's story, as sad as it is, isn't really all that unique. It just so happened to have the most tragic outcome possible. Anyway, I know this video is uh, a bit off topic for the kinds of things that I usually talk about, but lately, I, a lot of you guys know, I've just been talking about whatever is on my mind and on my heart, and this is definitely on both. And I wanted to speak this man's name, Daniel Desmond Amofa, AKA Etika, because hopefully at least some people will take from this tragic event that if someone is unwinding in front of our very eyes, rather than assuming the worst, the most cynical thing and thinking, oh, this is just a prank, this is just for clicks, maybe you'll look a little bit deeper and be able to see when someone truly is in pain. And thank you to you all in my YouTube family because you guys are very sweet and kind to me and encouraging and supportive and I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you guys. So. Thanks again. Let's keep this conversation going. Perhaps we can do uh, another chat sometime about mental health in the black community because I think that is a huge topic that is too often ignored and not discussed. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. And I love y'all. I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.